<laughs> what is the simile you want to make? When you are pregnant for, and okay, well, not me, okay. <laughs> <laughs> We launched Freedrum via crowdfunding four years ago to give drummers all around the world a way to practice anytime, anywhere. After reaching over 400% of our goal, thanks to our community, we're back to introduce the next generation of our instrument and software service. My name is Pablo. I'm one of the embedded engineers at Freedrum and I, I focus mostly on hardware design. So my name is Philip. I'm a co-founder of Freedrum. And here on a day-to-day -day basis, I work with people like Pablo and our engineering team as well as designers uh, to help bring our product to market. So with the first generation of the product, it was a great way for us to identify that there was a demand for this kind of thing. People wanted to be able to practice the drums without having to play along to a drum set because we love, we absolutely love drums. but. The one thing about drums is that they're very large, they're very loud, and they're often very expensive. And even ones that aren't expensive still have those other two issues that you struggle to find a place where to put them. Um, and when you start playing them, they're extremely loud. So our idea was to try and remove that element of the instruments and just focus on drumsticks, allow people to play the drums in the air. And that product was really successful, but we felt the technology was not where we needed it to be. So we decided to implement new technology. And the main difference between the two technologies is that the first technology is just a motion sensor. We understand the angle of the drumstick and its velocity. With the second product, we actually understand where it is in space. So similar to how you would play with a VR headset, where you can see your hands moving around in space around you. Uh, we have the same thing, but for, for drumsticks. What is really important for us is that this needs to be a musical instrument first. I think a lot of the feedback that we receive when people have a look at our product is that they think it's a gimmick or a toy. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to bring or implement, bring to market a new type of musical instrument. So it was really important for us to use real wood in the design. And when you hold it in your hands, make it feel like there's been a lot of passion behind developing this kind of product. In this specific version, we are using Hickory, but we're also having a look at maple and hornbeam. Most hickory is grown in the United States, so we would like to source a wood that is grown here in Europe, and also wood that's a little bit lighter, so that we can achieve a similar weight to a traditional drumstick. I think the one thing that sets us apart from our competitors is the attention to detail that we have on the hardware itself. It's really important for this to feel like a musical instrument. So we, we try to limit the interaction between a user's hand and plastic. When you have a look at some of our competitors, uh, they would make the entire drumstick out of plastic, which is fine if you want to reduce your, your costs and maximize your, your profit. But we feel that we're gonna have a better success with this product if we actually pay attention to the fine details of what musicians are looking for. When, when it comes down to uh, 3D tracking, it is true that the image recognition is a really reliable technology. However, it requires to have some kind of base station and it hooks you to a place, so to say. And one of the main premises behind the development of this product is that you can drum everywhere. And if you need to take with you a computer and a camera setup or a base station, like it would be like, for example, in VR headsets, that's not so portable. So we decide to go that was with um, ultrasound, which is a technology that can be implemented in battery power devices, so we can achieve the drum everywhere premise that we, we want. Our, our company is called Freedrum, so it's really important for us to allow people that freedom to drum anyway. Uh, with the design of the stick, we wanted to use as much wood as possible. With regards to the electronics, we need to fit in a battery, we need to fit in the ultrasound transducers, we need to fit in USB connectors. So what you can see here is that we have a traditional drumstick 
And what we've done is we've actually drilled a hole straight through it and then left the space for the battery. So when you insert the plastic chassis inside, you have all the electronics protected, uh, a button interface so you can turn it on and off, of course, and space for your battery. When I saw this, this idea, more than a constraint, I took it as a challenge. I mean, there is a space for uh, designing electronics around it. So we just uh, took the right decisions to make it work. Um, yeah, it was a quite interesting experience. But we didn't, we didn't get the design right first time. So this is one of our, the earlier versions of the, uh, of the product. This I think was from our first pre-production batch. And what we noticed when we assembled them, there was quite a lot of bend in the plastic. So it wasn't strong enough. If this would drop on the floor, it would probably break. We wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to uh, sort of make this last for as long as we could in production. So what we decided to do is in include an additional set of screws uh, on the wood itself and inside the plastic so we could reduce the amount of bending. But what that meant is that we had to cut our electronics in half. Pablo and the team had to really try and uh, work within this tight constraint to include as many electronic components in this side of the PCB as possible. So in terms of an engineering challenge, I would say, it's, I'd say it was quite large, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, all the iterations you see here are just uh, changes in the mechanics, uh, changes in the supply chain. Not all the components we used in the previous uh, spin were available for the next spin. And it was kind of a back and forth uh, game of what is the right uh, combination to make it work. We, we had to go for a different <coughs> manufacturing technology. But I mean, the result is really, really interesting. In terms of the ergonomics, one thing that was really important was to try and get the center of gravity of the stick uh, as close to where the hand is going to hold it as possible, as similar to a drumstick as possible. And we did that around the buttons. When you hold the stick in your hand, it feels very natural. It feels like it's weighted correctly. Uh, because if you were to hold up a traditional drumstick, the center of mass is in the same, is in the same place. It is the thickest drumstick you can buy. Uh, and it is a set length, so it is the same as a traditional 2B drumstick. This plastic is a combination of ABS and polycarbonate. This is a similar plastic they used to use in mobile phones when they used to make them all out of plastic because it's very durable and it has a hard uh, finish. So on the plastic at the top here above the button, we have what we call a speaker grill. Uh, the way that this product worked is that we transmit an ultrasound signal that happens 40 times a second on both sticks. This grill allows for that uh, transmission to take place. Yeah, um, yeah, basically this is what it goes inside here. So you can see that uh, it aligns the button with the, with the speaker grill and the transducers. So that, that's the reason, so to let the, the signals go through. In the first generation of the product, we required the user to put the sensors on the foot. Uh, we always found this to be a really strange experience, having to bend down and strap something over your shoe. People have shoes of different sizes, the straps would get dirty. It didn't really feel like a premium. Product. What we decided to do was we decided to place them on the knee instead uh, because it's more ergonomic. Also, it has to do with the uh, technology as well. So when we decide to, to place the sensors on the knees instead, the field of view was much broader and there was nothing in between and the performance uh, kind of skyrocketed. So inside our software, you can decide whether you want to play heel up and heel down. And that is a, a huge request that came from our user base. So that's something that was really important for us to do in this version of the product. Um, what we found by placing the pedals on the knees that we got a, a more accurate result to distinguish between heel up and heel down. The design of the pedal sensor uh, was really important for us to, to get right because, you know, traditionally with the previous product, it was quite uncomfortable to press the button. So with this larger surface area, you can press the button with one finger, with two fingers. Uh, it has, it's a lot more satisfying uh, to interact with. And as you can see, there are ridges around the button. And if you think about the drumstick as a speaker, because there is a speaker grill on the, on the drumstick, you can think about the pedal sensor as a microphone because the pedal sensor is the one that receives the signal and actually processes it in a way to understand where the drumstick is transmitting the signal from. So as you can see, we have um, these little things here, both drumstick and foot sensor. These are called ultrasound transducers and we use them in a microphone speaker manner. So the drumstick is the speaker and the foot sensor is the microphone. 
and they are called transducers because they kind of transduce uh, different kinds of uh, energy into another. So when we use them as speakers, we we excite the, the electric terminals with a signal and that signal makes the, this uh, membrane to vibrate and that creates a sound wave. And when you, we use them as, um, as microphones, that sound wave will come here to this membrane, it will make it vibrate and that vibration will turn into electrical signal that we measure. Um, the first iteration of the product, as of the proof of concept of the technology, it was this, these two boards. This was the drumstick and this was the sensor. And you can clearly see that this was kind of a prototype, DIY-ish kind of look. And we refined this, this circuit in two more iterations, which were this, these two. In this one is the same circuit, but in a more compact factor. And this was the first, um, the first real pedal um, sensor. In, in this one, we integrated two receivers and we spaced them similar way as we did here. And later we started em embedding. Can I ask, why is there a sausage on this <laughs> PCB? Okay, so we internally call all our uh, PCBs with sausage names and the reason being is when I was designing the analog electronics uh, to process the ultrasound signal, at some point one of the signals in the oscilloscope looked like a effect you were using before. A compressor. A compressor called sausage fattener. <laughs> so this one was called Pulse. This one, yeah, also Pulse. This one is called Cabanos. And this one is called Chorizo. So yeah, that's kind of the, <laughs> the joke. Building such a product from scratch where you are developing a new technology almost in-house requires a lot of back and forth research and you might get it right at first try but uh, on some of the parts of the system it's not mature yet. I would say that if we wouldn't have uh, the struggles we had uh, finding components to the world situation we, we would have probably wrap up the, the design in three iterations tops. When the customer wants to update the software, there is one process called uh, FOTA, which is firmware over the air, which is quite a standard practice in the industry. The customer will get, the, will get a notification in the smartphone uh, saying, oh, you have a new update. So and the smartphone will connect to the kit, will notify that there is an update, and the kit will start the update process. A lot of us consider ourselves artists here, you know, and artists never complete their work, <laughs> they abandon it. So, you know, we, we want to make sure that whatever we're, we're creating here is, is possible to be enjoyed by our customers. So when you receive your Freedom Kit, it's not going to be, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be really enjoyable to use, but it's not going to be finished because we're constantly going to update it and do iterations and make it better. Listen to your feedback and include those into firmware updates.